Jeremy Barker Plotkin, owner of Simple Gifts Farm, uh, to talk about some hands, hands-on experience with no-till farming. Welcome, yes. Jeremy. <clears throat> Thanks, Kevin. It's good. So, yeah, so I'm Jeremy Barker Plotkin. I, I'm one of the two co-owners of Simple Gifts Farm, um, just up the road from Lake Warner in uh, North Amherst. Um, David Tepfer is the other the other uh, co-owner there. And um, I'm not talking about it today, but Masood's uh, presentation was very interesting. And we do um, do rotational grazing of cattle and um, laying hens on our land um, on, on rotation uh, ground. So I also have a friend that grazes goats on her solar panel. So I could talk about that a little bit as well. Um, but uh, I'm going to talk about our, our organic no-till um, we're, we've been transitioning the farm into a no-till system. Um, we're doing it, um, maybe not only, but as, partly as a response to uh, climate dis disruption. Um, so, you know, as someone who works outside um, and is dependent on the weather, I can say that, you know, climate disruption is real and it's, it's happening already. It's happening now. Um, you know, a lot of you probably know and understand that, but, um, you know, some of the things that we've, we hear the, the projections and um, we're already seeing this kind of thing, but it, it is um, projected to get worse. We're projected to have higher temperatures and precipitation, but also a lot less regularity. So uh, periods of drought and periods of extreme, extreme storms, extreme wetness, um, which were, we're seeing this for sure. You know, 2020 was a drought year. It was still dry well into spring 2021. Um, and then we had the wettest July on record, which if you guys haven't seen the numbers, um, you know, our average annual rainfall is 40 inches. We had 12.7 inches in July. Um, so that's, it's not just a little wet. <laughs> you know, that's, that's real wet. And it's been wet um, continuing uh, August and into September. Um, not quite as extreme, but uh, it's still wet. Um, so um, organic farming is um, an answer to both adaptation um, to the, this climate disruption and mitigation um, of the, you know, of what's going on. Um, there's been research out that says that organic farming systems um, are more resilient to uh, these types of um, temperature and precipitation um, fluctuations and are able to sequester carbon in the soil. Um, and really like there's research out there that says this, but it shouldn't be, shouldn't be a surprise because um, the fertility in an organic system is based on soil health and soil health in a lot of ways um, is equivalent to uh, soil carbon. So organic farmers are very um, focused on building their soil carbon. So that soil carbon or organic matter in the soil can act as a sponge. Um, it absorbs more moisture when it's wet and releases it when it's dry. Um, so we've been growing organically for um, in North Amherst for 15 years. Um, we've always done rotational grazing on our, um, on our rotation land, the, the land that's not in vegetables. Um, which is a, a way of kind of pumping carbon into the soil. Um, and we've started doing uh, even more now with, uh, with trying to transition to no-till. Um, so no-till systems can be even, um, even more than, than just a, a regular organic system. Um, when you till your soil, it's kind of like opening up the damper in your wood stove. So you're letting air into the soil and the carbon kind of uh, burns up. Um, the conventional, like non-organic no-till systems have used herbicide to uh, clear the field um, for planting and also for weed control. A lot of the like Roundup Ready um, GMO corn and soybeans is, you know, that that's they do that for a no-till system, um, so they can they can you know nuke it with Roundup, plant their corn or soybeans, and then you know nuke it again when they're uh, to, to keep the weeds down. So the, um, you know, the GMO corn is, is resistant to that herbicide. Um, 
there are efforts to do um, organic no-till, but it's really um, kind of an emerging and developing uh, thing. And um, for us, it's been the last two years, it's, it's been, we've, we've really kind of had to relearn some of our systems because um, our, the way we would typically do things is, you know, you, you plow or till the field to get it ready to plant. And then we use tillage um, in between, you know, we plant everything so that we can get in between the rows to cultivate, to, um, to control weeds. Um, so we're really developing almost completely, completely new systems. Um, the crops that we're growing are the same, but, um, but we're, we're uh, really coming up with some new systems to, <clears throat> to reduce our tillage. So we've got basically two different types of systems that we've worked out. One um, is an intensive system. And, and you probably heard some of this from, from Dan Pratt yesterday. Um, there's people that are doing no-till, organic no-till, um, that's very much you know, small scale, hand scale um, farming, uh, you know, kind of the, the postage stamp size farms. Um, and uh, so we're, we're trying to do this. We've picked out some crops where we're trying to kind of shrink the acreage that we put in these crops. So things like salad mix, um, carrots, lettuce, uh, things that kind of are well adapted to a more intensive system. We're, we're kind of shrinking the area that we, um, that we do, trying to get the same amount of production, but out of a smaller area. Um, and that we started last year. Um, and then the second system is a more extensive uh, system where we use a heavy, heavy um, transferred mulch. So transferred mulch is, you know, we grow it grow mulch in one place and, and move it to another place and make a, make a thick layer. Um, so that we really, we did, we experimented a little bit with it um, in 2020, but in 2021, we got some new equipment um, with help from a grant from, um, from MDAR, the Mass Department of Agricultural Resources. Um, the, it's the acre grant, which, uh, the C is climate. <laughs> I don't know what acre stands for. Um, so this is the intensive system. Um, we use these black silage tarps, um, and this is this is used actually in both systems. We use these this, uh, these black um, silage tarps. We lay them down to kind of kill everything that's there. So in, in some ways, this is like an organic uh, version of herbicide. Um, it's not quite as quick as Roundup. Um, we have to leave those on for about three weeks. Um, we leave that tarp on. Um, and we've, we've actually prepared these beds at the beginning of the season by um, laying a thick layer of compost down. Um, so that compost really acts as a mulch. Um, and then we're, we're putting that tarp on for about three weeks, pulling it off. We're seeding directly into, into the um, soil and you can see this is that yellow thing is our is the cedar that we use and um, you can kind of see where the tarp's been pulled off it's just brown um, so we, we seed into there and then like the, the next section back you can see there's some salad greens growing some of them are covered by remade to keep uh, insects out um, so we'll we'll seed it we'll harvest it and then we put the tarp right back down after we're done harvesting. Um, in 2020, we had a section like this where we rotated uh, three cycles through the field. So we just, we plant salad greens, tarp it, um, or harvest, tarp it, and then come back about, about three weeks later. And we just kind of rotated around that field. Um, and it worked. <laughs> um, so with, you know, as I kind of alluded to, our, our big worry is, is about weed control. So in a no-till system, you theoretically have, with less disturbance of the soil, you're gonna get less weeds germinating, um, but then we, we typically cultivate to control weeds. Um, so we're, you know, it's a trade-off. We're, we're um, sacrificing our ability to control weeds. Um, 
but the you know the the gains is that with disturbing the soil less we theoretically get less weed so this was a big leap leap of faith for us to go and and do this um and we you know we just i guess um had heard about enough people um doing this kind of thing and having it work um that we were we were ready to take the leap after after several years of kind of figuring it out uh, and, and researching it. So, and this is this is where people are harvesting that salad mix, um, and you can see it's the weeds aren't so bad there. I mean, that's 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 good. Um, we also found that our quality was quite a bit better. The the salad mix we got out of this, and we had one one point when we were we had like a tilled field right next to this field. Um, and the salad mix was noticeably kind of crunchy, crunchier and lusher. Um, so we're definitely seeing a, um, some benefits in terms of, uh, of quality as well. Um, here's another example of this intensive system from 2020. This is lettuce that we, we actually transplanted directly into a compost mulch that had been tarped. Um, and I think that this, this was the second round. So we had, we had planted lettuce there, harvested the lettuce, tarped it, and then planted lettuce again. So one of the ways we're, you know, kind of shrinking our, um, shrinking our footprint for the, with this intensive season is by doing multiple seedings over the course of the year. And with this, the salad mix, can I go back? Um, we actually, in this setup, we have 10 rows per bed instead of, um, when we have to cultivate in between, we, we were doing five rows per bed. So we're, in this case, we, by going around the field three times and by planting twice as much per bed, twice as many rows per bed, we're, you, we're doing this on one sixth the, the land that we did before. And, you know, at least in theory, getting the same production um, out of one sixth of the land. This is one of the developments that we um, put in in 2020 as well. We uh, modified our water wheel transplanter. So you can see um, the, the, the way this works is water comes out of that spigot in the middle um, and kind of squirts into those big yellow wheels. And as the tractor drives, the, those spikes punch a hole in the ground. Um, that you can someone sitting behind this thing and they can stick the plant into the ground um, as the tractor moves along we've got you know a flat of a bunch of bunch of plants that they're planting into the ground we modified this i don't know how well you can see but there's a there's a big long spike that's bolted onto the end of the of the regular spike um so this allows us to kind of punch through the mulch um, it's, it's just a sharper, pointier uh, thing that punches through the mulch. Um, and we used it in the intensive system in that, that lettuce field that you saw. But then this is, uh, this is Dave, me and Dave uh, this spring. We, this, we, it came really in handy with the, um, the more extensive system. So you can see this field behind us. We've... There was a rye cover crop there. We mowed the rye, um, and then we mowed more rye from somewhere else and spread it on here. Um, and then we used that spiky transplanter, and we were able to drive right, um, right in and plant directly into that into that mulch. Um, we definitely, with this system, had a big learning curve this year. We figured things out like. Uh, that so that spiky transplanter it makes a hole um, but if it's like a fluffy tilled soil you make a a hole that's like a it's like a little muddy hole that you put the plant you just stick the plant in there and then that as the mud kind of dries it it forms around the plant um in the no-till uh fields it was more like just a hole that was full of water and then when the if you just put the plant in there then the water dries up, then you've got like a plant in a hole. <laughs> you don't have a plant that's in the soil. So we figured out, first of all, we had to, and some of the mulch would actually get down in that hole as well. So we had to kind of pull the mulch aside and then close the hole. So we had to drive the tractor a little bit slower. Um, 
yeah, there's a lot of learning that went on with the system this year. Um, the timing of the mulch harvest is really important. Um, and with a lot of our uh, tomatoes and peppers and eggplants, the warm season crops, summer squash and cucumbers, we're wanting to plant, you know, early and mid May and the rye isn't really quite big enough by then. So the, the um, and part of that means that when you mow it, um, it doesn't necessarily die. <laughs> so we, we, you know, in this field, we mowed rye and we put more rye mulch on top and then the rye started growing back, <laughs> which was a little bit of a problem. Um, but we were able to use weed mat as a backup. I think I've got a picture later on of the, <clears throat> what the weed mat looks like. Um, so this is a video. This is a video of the equipment that we got with that, um, that MDAR grant and how we use it to spread mulch. So I'll leave it to YouTube if this works. Miracle. So this is this is the um, it's called it's a hopper in there. And here, you hear Dave is going and dumping it right into a manure spreader. All the equipment in the grant was for the purpose of uh, moving to no-till and other, uh, like, these newer forms of farming. Is that the idea? And this is, this is spreading the manure or spreading the mulch. So one of the things we learned, like, that's a pretty heavy layer, but we actually need to have a thicker, a thicker layer. And then this is that, that spiky transplanter. Um, we're just driving it dry, but there's seats behind it that um, people sit on to, to transplant into. Now I'm on some weird YouTube page. How do I get past this? Okay, here we go. Uh oh. All right. So, yeah, so a significant learning curve. Um, we need to plant mulch. This is, um, you can see this field, this, this summer squash actually turned out pretty well. This was the, the same field that we saw me and Dave standing in, um, in front of. You can see this black material um, is the weed mat that we use to, uh, to, you know, get some weed control in between the rows. And over to the, um, to the left, you can see it's kind of grayish green. That's actually that's rye that's growing back in, in the peppers. Um, so, so we, we did able, we were able to put down some weed mat and, and got a half decent pepper crop out, but it was, it wasn't the best. Um, so with our need to plant earlier, we're going to use more. We're actually putting a lot more fields into oats and peas, um, rather than rye. Um, so, <clears throat> and we're doing that now we're, uh, this is, kind of getting to the end of when, when you can plant oats and peas. So oats and peas will grow um, in the fall and they'll grow, actually put on, still keep putting on growth um, into December. And then when it gets real cold, they, they die. So we'll have a, you know, kind of a standing mulch and a dead cover crop. Um, and then we'll, we'll apply more mulch on the top of that, but it, we won't, hopefully won't have the issues that we did with, uh, with the rye growing back. And then our later crops will, will plant into rye um, using the weed mat as a backup. And I think um, next year we'll be a little more prepared to, to go ahead and do that, to, to put the weed mat in. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's my presentation. I don't know if you guys, have any questions you want to ask? Um, I might suggest actually, uh, since we are still kind of behind schedule that maybe we, since nothing seems to be pressing right now, uh, hold the questions for a little while later so that we can get to uh, read. Is everybody okay with that? 
do see a question in the chat. Oh, is there? Uh, yeah. Let me see. Um, I don't have that. From Amelia, do you worry about killing off the macro and microbiota in the soil with the black carps? Um, I think, so we're, we're putting those on for a relatively short period of time. And what happens when we do that is the, you know, the plants die and that feeds the, um, that feeds the uh, microbes. So they're going to, they're going to have something to eat. Um, and then, you know, by the time we're pulling the tarp off, hopefully they haven't, haven't run out of food. <laughs> um, and then compaction with the, uh, with the tarps, that is, that is um, a concern. Um, it does, it does seem like it, it compacts a little bit. Um, we're actually in, uh, we're wondering about improvements in water infiltration or retention with the no-till system. Um, yes, we have, and we're hoping to see it more over time. Um, one of the things that um, the research shows is that um, you tend to see more compaction issues in the early part of a no-till transition. And then as your, as your soil gets and your microbes kind of get used to it, um, and, and, you know, there, there's a transition time um, where the, where you have more compaction and then it gets to be less as you, as you, um, get into the system more. And we're actually part of a grant with NOFA Massachusetts where they're measuring, um, compaction and water infiltration. Um, and that, yep. Yeah. Does that answer your question, Amelia? All right. Yeah, it's you, one o'clock. Um, yep, she said yes. Okay. And I'm sorry for overlooking your question, Amelia. Um, so how about if we move on now? And thank you very much. Um, Thanks for having me. Jeremy. Pardon me? Oh, Thanks yeah, absolutely. That was very yeah. interesting. Yeah. And I have to head out myself. So okay. thanks. I hope the rest of your uh, summit is productive. <laughs> <laughs>